What's up, Wolfpack fam? It's your boy Kid back at it again, diving into Series 2 Heat A from Robot Wars. Uh, let's not waste any time. I'm ready for some damn destruction, boys and girls. The peace has been shattered, diplomacy failed, the robots are back. It's all out war and the battle lines have been drawn. So prime your weapons and evict the faint hearted as we put the scrap back into metal. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your commander in chief, Craig Charles. Now, if you've ever wondered whether machines are taking over the world, then wonder no more, because Robot Wars is back. And it's bigger, it's more destructive, and offers more metal carnage than when Metal Mickey tried to juggle with Sentex. Robot Wars is a survival of the fittest. But as contenders aren't body beautifuls and figure-hugging lycra, they're ugly lumps of metal made out of nuts and bolts and household appliances and whatever was left lying around the garage at the time. Oh, and yeah, they want to kill each other. As always, they'll face each other, they'll face dangerous challenges, and they'll also take on the mechanical might of the house robots. Shunt. Who can forget the ferocity of Shunt, capable of cleaving all opponents in two with the deadliest of axes? Matilda. Matriarchal Matilda returning with improved titanium tusks and a reinforced chainsaw tail. Dead metal holding on to his sinister reputation with those pneumatic pincers and a ferocious circular saw. The sergeant belching out fiery damnation. The house robots are back, and this time it's personal. Catch your breath. There's one more. The biggest, baddest, butchest of them all. Ladies and gentlemen, bow down to the mechanical might of Sir Killalot. Awesome, majestic, with a deadly claw capable of cutting through solid steel, Sir Killalot thrives on wanton destruction. Now, you might think Sir Killalot's giving it all of that. You might think he's all mouth and no trousers. But look what he can do. Lump of metal, robotic arm. Awesome power personified. Now, over the last six months, garages and workshops have been clattering to the sound of roboteers constructing their machines. They're making some final, last-minute adjustments, and as ever, Philip is with them in the pits. Yes, well, Robot Wars has grown phenomenally since we last hit your screens. In fact, over 120 teams are taking part in this series, and I'm surrounded by some of them now. These guys represent some of the best technicians and radio control experts in the country today, and they're preparing for war. They know that this last-minute fine-tuning could mean the difference between victory or defeat. Definitely saw some familiar faces, and I'm right now I'm so happy because the quality is better uh, than the this previous series, so I can actually see a lot better the details. So I'm freaking stoked. Each week, six teams will be at each other's throats. Their robots will be bashing the living daylights out of each other. There's only one small rule: only one can survive. So let's meet the contenders. First, from East Balsey in Surrey, Victor. It may look like a wind-up go-kart, but this tubular steel frame, aluminium and steel-plated armoured V-shaped robot has weapons driven by a motorbike starter, and the lawnmower blade can be replaced by a formidable flail. From Dartford Girls Grammar School, Nepal. The veteran fighters from the First Wars, the girls are back with the flame-coloured Napalm. A 15 mile an hour top speed's a fair lick. It can push its own weight, and the chainsaw has a 16-inch blade. From Burgess Hill in West Sussex, Pandemonium. Owner Pete Collier once built a go-kart with shaky wheels. He went to France to buy these to create Pandemonium. The outer coatings expanding foam polypropylene. Watch out for the two cold chisel ramming spikes. From Osset in Yorkshire, yes, the resistance. The bog-eyed yes, the resistance is the lightest competitor tonight. Don't take it too lightly, though, with its lifting blade made out of a snow shovel. Its chassis is an old microwave oven, and it's driven by windscreen wipers from a mini. <laughs> 
from Sutton in Surrey, Caliban. Named after the beast in Shakespeare's Tempest and hoping to whip up a storm, Caliban's built from a bolted Dexian frame powered by two 12-volt batteries. Its spinning dome has slashing and cutting weapons. From the Tom Atari School in Dorchester, Demolition Demon. Powered by two wheelchair motors donated by Dorset County Council, armoured with a galvanised finish, its grinding disc is powered by a 22 horsepower motor. It's not the most dangerous, but Craig, it looks hardy to me. It's all very simple. Each of our robots will face a variety of challenges and battles. There's three rounds, the gauntlet, the trials and the arena. And because we don't like losers on this show, one robot will be eliminated at the end of each round. The winner will earn a place in our series semi-finals. That's enough of the talk. Let's get stuck in. I got to say, my pick's got to be Napalm, but there's so many strong ones. Even these robots already look way better than Series 2, so we're in for a treat. Our first round is the Gauntlet, designed to test driver skill, robot design, and sheer brute strength to its max. Each team competes separately. The important thing is they get from here to the end zone in as fast a time as possible. Now, they have three routes to choose from. They can work their way straight down the middle, in which case, they have to negotiate spikes, a brick wall in whichever way they see fit, the treacherous seesaw, and as if that weren't enough, then they have a meeting with the lovely Sergeant Bash. If they're really silly, they'll risk the route over here with its flame pit, our ram rig with its circular saws, and to top that off, a meeting with the lovely Matilda. Now, they might think we've given them an easy option with this route over here. Since it's only got two pits to fall in, let me tell you, the biggest pitfall of all is here. Sir lot, and he defends this route fiercely. Badass. First up, Napalm with old friends of Robot Wars, Claire Greenaway and Rebecca Glenn. Robot ears, stand by. In the last war, if you remember, we had Detonator. Now we introduce Napalm. His main weaponry is this arm which goes up and then it activates the micro switch at the back which turns on this lethal chainsaw. Three, two, one, activate. And the 15-year-old girls driving napalm straight at the brick wall. David Crosby, the last time he was on the programme, did his nut! And there's a killer lot coming in round the back. He's mean, he's moody, he's magnificent, he's menacing. Napalm, one of the heavyweight robots, but look at that, a lightweight in the arms of Shaquille lot And the chainsaws come off! That's the weaponry gone! 16 inches long it may be, but it's no opponent for Shaquille lot and he could dominate Robot Wars. Napalm's Jeez. driven in onto the tank track. Holy shit! I'm going to stop picking, guys. If you guys don't want me to pick which robot I want to win, let me know. Sir Killalot just destroyed my robot pick. Oh, man. Yeah, Captain David Crosby, Claire Greenaway and Rebecca Glenn. Well, you were sort of ambushed by Killalot. Yeah. And he just he just went in for the kill. Yep. You must be gutted, though. I mean, he's, he's mashed it to pieces. So is he. But he's dead as well. He's stopped. If he gets through to the next round, do you think you'll be ready? Yeah, we'll all be ready. We'll be there, we'll Give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Steady progress by Napalm. Seven and a half meters. Should be good enough to see them through. I don't know. Robot ears, stand by. Pete Collier and Chris Loder with Pandemonium. It's got a large fence post on the front, which is designed to raise and hopefully take out some nasty cutting gear. Three, two, one. I wonder if they'll use those cold chisel spikes at the wall. Thinking twice about it. Good steering. Oh, taking on the circular saws. And caught by the saws. Grinding hard. There goes the lifting spike. They're off the circular saws now. Now, can they get away from our squeezing ram rig? Waiting their time. Chris Loder once wore a plastic Viking outfit. And it's gone through with the power. Of Thor's hammer! And they're through! Great run! And I thought it had gone horribly wrong when they steered into the saws. But that's a good run. Pandemonium completing the course. Robot ears, stand by. Yes, the resistance driven by Colin Scott. 
This is our robot, Fiesta Resistance. It's a fiberglass bodywork and uses four motors off a mini. And at the back, the weapon are spikes. At the front, there's a snow plough, which hopefully will ease out the competition. Three, two, one. 32-year-old Colin, the driver and market stall worker, his sister Julie, <laughs> wants he meets Snowplow to push anything out of the way. And Brian Newcomb, the third member of the team, once built a shed. You've got toy tricycle wheels. Will you be able to get over the bricks on your toy tricycle wheels? Yes, because I've got the shovel to lift the bricks out of where. Well, the shed stood up, and so <laughs> did the wall. I'm not too sure whether Fiesta Resistance will. Under the tusks oh. of Matilda. And here comes Sir Killalot! And look at the power! And look at the bad mood! It's Victor! Like a piece of fluff! Piece of resistance! No resistance there! Surrender! Get that shit out of here, man! Oh my god! And the hopes of Colin Scott left hanging by a thread! Wow, really? you didn't seem to have the power to break down the wall. And then you just got caught in a pincer movement, didn't you? Yeah, well, it was BS de resistance, and now it's a piece of scrap. <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't last very long, though, did it? No. No, well, that's, that that's the way it goes sometimes in Robot Wars. Give them a round of applause! <laughs> Cheers, guys. BS de resistance in trouble. 3.8 metres covered only. We're down to lack of power, you know. Simple as that. So, what can you say? No. no. Could you soup it up for the next round, do you think? Yes, could do. If you get through to the next if round? If I get through, yeah. <laughs> OK, well <laughs> done. Fingers crossed. That's nice. Roboteers, stand by. Caliban, Team Captain Eric Hodgins on the right. This outer shell casing is made out of an old industrial fan and the lid is made out of polycarbonate. So inside, we've got two drive motors. We've got a flywheel ring there and the starter motor out of the Ford car. That will rotate this and drive the blades round. Three, two, one, activate. But to run the gauntlet, I don't think they're using the blade, they're using the flail. On the brink drive chain Whoops. there. Driving seems to be a bit of a problem though. They've lost their way. I think steering's a bit of a problem here. Daniel Bushnell and Martin Beckett at the controls. They're all over the place. Crashing, bumping, barging. Oh, no. And now taking on Sir Killalot. The only weapon he has is that flail. There it goes. He's knocked off the three-metre marker. Sir Killalot closes in, though. Can he stop that flail? Flail rock and roll. Cease. Caliban dead and buried. Let's freaking go, man. This is what it's about. Hoisted by his own petard. And only 0.2 metres. <laughs> Robot ears, stand by. Victor, driven by Guy Pickett, a remote control car fan. We have a lawnmower blade as the weapon, and it's powered by a motorbike starter motor, which makes it go pretty fast. Three, two, one. 13-year-old Gareth Goddard is the design man behind Victor. Attacking the wall and through. But there's a brick caught underneath, only a 5mm ground clearance. Could be a trouble there for Victor. With a robot like this, you could choose almost any route, I suppose. Go down the middle. Straight down the middle. Straight down the middle is a problem. And I don't think that lawnmower blade will be a help. Not with Sir Killalot in. We know he can squeeze and break metal, but he can't catch Victor! Go on, Victor! Victorious! And through! <laughs> he made it through to the end zone. At first, the thought, well, he had the power to break the wall. And then he, and then he seemed to get stuck in your, and your wheels were spinning. And then, but it's like Killalot came and helped you out in a way, didn't he? He's suddenly become a good friend of ours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you really think you had the power to, to break down that wall? Yeah, we knew we had the power. The trouble was, I think one of our wheels caught on a thing and spun us round and pulled us back into the wall. And then we sort of got raised up on our, off the ground and the wheels were just couldn't quite hit it. Also, we needed a nudge to get it backwards. Give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Great job. A good, clean run by Victor. They completed the course in the fastest time they're through. And Caliban looks very suspect. Robot ears, stand Demolition by. Demolition Demon, driven by 17-year-old Peter Harrison. It 
powered by two 24 volt electric wheelchair motors. And unlike other competitors who have got the control gear throughout the robot, all the essential components are kept within one metal box in the middle to protect them. Three, two, one, activate. I think this is a solid looking robot. Gearing towards the wall and then changing direction. Surely they're not going to take on Sir Killalot and the pit. And also on this near side is Sergeant Bash. If they can get beyond Killalot with a little turn of pace, they do. Matilda comes in with the chainsaw. That's a horrible sight, isn't it? Back that ass. Another pit, they've gone beyond the pit. Now in comes Bash beyond Bash, what a brave run! Terrific stuff by Demolition Demon and Throw! Demolition Demon team, come and have a word on the podium! Matilda's got some big junk in the trunk. Come and have a word! You went and took on Sir Killalot. Why did you decide to go up against Killalot? We're still arguing the last two seconds, we're deciding whether the grinding discs, but I think we took the right way. Give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen! Demolition Demon, I threw a clean run in the fastest time. Wham, bam, thank you, Caliban. Bye-bye. Sadly, we're going to have to say goodbye to the Caliban team. It's really sad. Oh, yes, well, I'm afraid that's it. It's a competition and we, we didn't do very well, so... So will you repair it? Well, I'd like to keep it as it is and just keep it as it's to show to people. It's a memorial of your time on Robot Wars, which was short but sweet. Thank you very much. One robot down, one more to be eliminated after the trials. Now, when you think of Skittles, you think of sweaty old men huddled in the corner of a pub, dribbling over warm beer. But our game of Skittles isn't like that. No, 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 no. In our game of Skittles, each of our surviving robots has to knock down as many battles as possible in the time allowed. The one that knocks down the least amount of battles gets bowled out of the contest. So, let's get ready to shake, rattle and bowl. Let the trials begin! Oh, yeah. Three, two, one, activate! Fifteen-year-old Claire Greenaway driving Napalm needs to get as many barrels down as she can. Yes. If she goes within that triangle, the house robots can't get it at one explosive start. She wants to be a lifeguard, we may need her. And now, look, she's burrowing in. The house robots can't follow her. Um, we've got to attack the triangle, um, get into it, knock as many skittles over as possible. Whilst we're inside that triangle, the house robots cannot touch us. Yeah. Oh. What a bet. You're stuck in there now, David Crosby. The teach for the girls. They've got a few barrels over. Nine barrels in all for Napalm. Setting the standards, but not really setting the place on fire. Three, two, one. Pandemonium, not as fast as Napalm, but a more direct route. Oh, look at those barrels fly. And now, does it have the weaponry to get further barrels down? What on earth is the sergeant doing in there? Doesn't want to leave the barrels. There's that steel spike for attack. Oh, -ho! and it's losing weight. No wonder Matilda was there. And now, away from the barrels! Got to be closer than that! That's a poor finish. But still, nine barrels achieved by Pandemonium. Three, two, one, activate. This is the family team. Ken Goddard, Gareth Goddard's dad and Guy Pickett's uncle. And that's a steamrolling start. Right in there from Victor. And there's the lawnmower blade spinning around. But I just wonder whether they're stuck. Flicks another barrel off, slices into the barrel. But they don't seem to have enough movement now with that big steel frame to get away. Cutting through the barrels like cheese, but no more tumbling to the ground. Only four barrels from Victor. Third place. They could be in trouble. Three, two, one. One, activate. This is Demolition Demon from the Thomas Hardy School in Dorchester. The school crest is on the back. An explosive start. A big metal spike on the back, swirling round, sending barrels cascading. Another one topples. Turn, turn, turn. Get that blade spinning. In comes Killalot. Seeks refuge amongst the barrels. 
and I wonder if he's done enough. Another nice. couple tumble. I think they're through. Demolition Demon has done a lot. This is a marvellous, marvellous spell. Demolition Demon certainly ruffling the feathers of the house robots. And they seem to have gone berserk. They're right. angry. They want revenge. And Demolition Demon is bearing the brunt of their anger. Come on, stop it. They've gone berserk. They're cheating, guys. They're cheating, man. What the hell? Well, well, well. Three. 20 barrels. No wonder they were angry. But we've got to get them under control. Roboteers, stand by. You mean to tell me that despite looking extremely wonky, you're fully functional? Well, that's flexible, so it can wobble them out of place. Uh, just so happy about it. And it's turbo charged now. And how have you achieved that in the couple of hours you've had? Uh, bigger batteries. Three, two, one. Activate. Turbocharged. Oh, yeah. Right, let's see what power. We had Pièce de Résistance with that snow plough. <laughs> Race, here we go. No power at all. That's snow joke. <laughs> and the barrels stay in place. And I think that's the best we're going to see from Pièce de Résistance. And the house robots simply toying. So kill a lot in the way. Flips oh it up God. and over Matilda. And that's the end. Pièce de Résistance. Come up to the platform. Colin Scott, Brian Newcomb and Julie Scott. Well, that did not go at all well, did it? Uh, well, it thought with my shovel being up, I might have got the, a few top ones, but, uh, you know, never did. It was a bit like Finland in the Eurovision Song Contest. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nil point. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, well done, guys. but look at this. Yes, the resistance has become some sort of dreadful plaything for Killer Lot. Oh. Broiled boggle eyes. You will not be going to the ball. Cinders. Not a barrel of glass for Pièce de Résistance. No barrels. They're out. It just kind of stopped just before you got to the Skittles and thought, well, mm. I got to the Skittles. It was Skittles, as though you were thinking, and then it shall was... I bother with the Skittles? <laughs> <laughs> well, it didn't have the power to ever power it again. Yeah, that one lacked serious power. That thing was going like one mile per hour. How are you going to knock a barrel with that? So it comes to this. Four robots will enter the arena and only one will survive. Our four robots have been randomly drawn in battle against each other. The winners will then face each other and fight for a place in our series semi-finals. Now, to win, all they've got to do is obliterate the opponent or immobilise them. If there's no clear-cut winner, a decision will be made by our panel of judges. They'll be looking at style, control, damage and aggression. Our judges are Eric Dickinson, a veteran from Robot Wars in America, Professor Noel Sharkey, head of robotics at Sheffield University, and Adam Harper, an engineering specialist. Hey, hey, let's get stuck in. The first semi-final, Napalm against Pandemonium. Three, two, one. And there, the dreadful pincer of Sir Killalot in the PPZ, the perimeter patrol zone. Bossed by our own house robots. They don't want to go into that zone in the red and black. Here's Pandemonium circling, coming in with the front spike. That's dangerous driving there because Matilda's tusks are in the PPZ. Yes. And it's all over. That was Pandemonium. Well, guys, yeah. come on to the podium. Well done. Pretty sad. 20 seconds and we're, and we're beating up by a couple of girls. No offence. They never laid a glove on you. You got, you got them in the house robots. To be fair, she has this habit of hurting herself and um, she did that just then. What can we say? Well, there you go, guys. You're through to the last battle. Yeah, you're feeling lucky. We're feeling very lucky. Give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. 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 Lucky, lad. <laughs> Pathetic, wasn't it? It was a bit, wasn't it? I mean, what can you do? What can you do? We thought she was heavy, thought she had a very low centre of gravity, and she thought she would stay upright. <laughs> How wrong could we have been? The second semi final Victor against Demolition Demon. Three, two, one. Activate. The wedge shaped Demolition Demon with its slow ground clearance against the higher Victor. Nice. Flailing in. 
against the armor coating of Demolition Demon. Good start by Victor. But back comes the Demolition Demon at it, and Matilda, and Shunt in there as well. Victor turns to go away, and can't get away! Look at the grinding disc of Demolition Demon, though. Shattered, just like some old sad LP no longer in the charts. But Victor can't move, it must have done the damage, the grinding disc. Victor's in trouble here now. The aggression, the controlled aggression is from Demolition Demon. In comes Matilda, backs away for another charge with those ferocious tusks. Now turns to bring in the chainsaw, Matilda. Hacks, yes. slices. Yes. Victor in trouble. So too the Demolition Demon, though. If the sergeant or Killalot get in, Killalot closing in on Victor and picking him up so effortlessly and trawling him away like some ghastly trophy back to his demonic cave. Still has the grip of Victor, does kill a lot. In comes the axe of Shunt on the Demolition Demon, but I don't think Demolition's going to be axed in this one. I think they've done enough. The Demolition team, the Victor team, come up to the podium. Now listen, you were immobilised for most of that game. Yeah. So the judges have decided that the decision has gone to the Demolition Demon team. <laughs> One fight away from the semi-finals. Think you're going to win this next fight? Oh, I think it's definite. Oh, confidence. Ladies and gentlemen, give them a round of applause. So we come to the first final of this series of Robot Wars. Napalm against oh, Demolition five. Demon. Three, two, one. Activate. And the winners qualify for the first of our series semi-finals of Robot Wars. Demolition Demon, the boys from Thomas Hardy School. Yes. And Napalm, the girls from Darpa Grammar. Napalm, the heavier and the faster. There's that metal grinding disc, though, that could be damaging. Oh, no! On Napalm, though, they get the judges. will vote on style, control, damage to your opponents and aggression. Teacher David Crosby getting involved. Matilda waits on the sidelines. That's good speed and good control by Napalm. Now coming in on the attack on Demolition Demon. Trying to get that grinding disc into play over the spikes. You see those two giant mandibles at the back. Yes. Spider-like jaws. Napalm attacking Demolition Demon again. In comes Demolition Demon underneath. Trying to get the wedge shape to effect and that big metal spike into play. Underneath, Napalm again. That's a good attack by Demolition Demon. In comes Dead Metal, one of the house robots. And there's the sergeant as well. Oh, and the girls have lost their petticoat, look, at the back of Napalm. They've suffered damage. Just about hanging on, that grid at the back. This is good work by Demolition Demon here. Spinning, coming in on the attack. There's the big titanium fronted ram scoop, though, oh. on Napalm, taking damage in there from Shunt. Ram raiding its way through, and underneath now Demolition Demon. Can he get that grinding disc to play? Under eight seconds to go, and they're away from the danger. But they were suspect there, Napal. Couple of buffets from Demolition Demon. Goodness me, this is going to go very, very close. It goes to the judges, and there's hardly a lick of paint, a smear of oil between the two teams. Very close. Well, total metal carnage. We now await the judges' decision. Judging on style, control, damage and aggression. Not good style there by Napalm, leaving itself open. Couple of good aggressive stabs back with the mandibles. That just didn't really come into play. Damage done to Napalm, but by the house robots. We now have the judges' decision. And hold on to your hats, it's quite controversial. The winner is Napalm! Ooh, the girls delighted. The boys disconsolate and the crowd don't like it. Well, the judges say that although you sustained an awful lot of damage, that was given to you by the house robots and that you are far more aggressive than Demolition Demon. Yes! How do you feel? Yeah. Happy. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful. Talk me through it. Well, that's clear. She did it. Well, they talk about women drivers, but it looked pretty spectacular to me, Claire. Well, of course, women are just the best, you know. <laughs> you just did sustain an awful lot of damage. Do you think your, your robot's going to be ready for the series semi-finals? Yeah, we'll go and pick all the bits up and stick them back on again. It did really well. Congratulations! Give them a round of applause! <laughs> well, you from the show that's bigger than Roseanne's draws. Good night. Good night from Robot Wars.
Well, bit annoyed at the judge's decision, but I suppose he's a boss, so we can't complain. Oh, man. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. So check this out, boys and girls. Um, do you guys agree with the judge's decision about Napalm winning? It definitely felt like the momentum was with um, Demolition. Um, definitely felt like they had the more um, momentum going there. Now, this show going to give me a heart attack choosing these, uh, you know, which one is going to win because, boy, was Napalm not doing good in the beginning, especially hitting the... Uh, the blocks and stuff. So, you know, this episode had some of the best uh, robots that we have yet to see. Um, I got to say, Sir Kill a Lot. Wow, dude, that is a sick robot. Such a badass robot right there. That might be my favorite, um, I guess you could say, the show bot. Um, definitely that one was doing some destruction. And this is what. I've been like kind of wanting, uh, you know, things to be breaking and stuff like that. And, you know, you saw some of the other robots, um, some of the smaller ones, the one with the shovel, man, that thing did not have power whatsoever. Um, and the shovel, forgive me, man, they, they, it was like it was so whack that shovel that shovel looked like that shit was just plastic man like just you know obviously it wasn't but that's what the equivalent it was because it just had no power no speed um there was another one with that circle thing that that thing kind of flew off early on but already number one thing we can say from the show i'm really happy is that i can actually see better on this thing it's not easy seeing these shows um when they're like 240p or whatever it is um so this one was a little way better so like it gives me more excitement because i can see the things uh the actual weaponry better um the host this host way better way better uh something better about him whether it's just the demeanor or he just seems like he's just more into it and, you know, I don't want to diss uh, Jeremy too much, but it was like when he was talking, sometimes he was like putting people to sleep. It feel like he put people to sleep and stuff. And this guy just seems like uh, just way, way, way better. Obviously, he didn't do a good job if they replaced him. Um, so, you know, we can't be too wrong on this uh, kind of thought, but way better um, announcer, uh, you know, with, with this guy. It just makes it seem a little bit more exciting. The new robots look great. The trials look better. Cool. I really did like the barrel thing. It's something very simple, but, um, you know, you got to kind of get a taste of like their power. Like, and, and <laughs> I'm still going to be, I'm still going to be laughing at the one that was like lawnmower looking uh, with the, with the, um, with the shovel on it, that thing was whack. I'm sorry, that was the wackest one possible. And, uh, you know, picking which one you want to win, you know, whether we get it right or wrong, but um, is is nerve wracking, man. When you, especially when I started, and they was like the uh, napalm. It was nice to see that they came back from season one. So, um, very cool to see that you know they people said like, oh yeah, we're gonna be back. And they stuck with it. So pretty cool that they get an opportunity to compete again. So there was some weaknesses with Napalm and stuff with the side piece getting out. So hopefully, I, I hope that they can refine it, refine their design a little bit more so it can have a little bit more power. But just the jump between Series 1's robots to 2 is like, it's 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 almost astronomical better robots. Um uh, you know, you see Matilda looking tweaked out, you know, you know, much better looking. Um, so I got a lot of favorites already. And Sir Kill a Lot is gonna be one of them. That is again such a badass robot. So this is gonna be um for me personally, if I if all the quality is this quality now, I'm gonna be loving it more because uh if I can see the battle, it's just gonna add to the excitement on it. So season two starting strong, better announcer by far. Um Better robots, better fights right now, more destruction so far, and, and this is what I really wanted, so I'm really happy. So this episode already made me happy, but I hope um, in some small way that it's given you some joy as well. That's the most important thing, one smile, one laugh at a time. If we achieve that, please let me know in the comments down below. One smile makes a difference for me, so I hope that in some way we made uh, we provided some joy for you all. So thanks so much for watching. And um, shout out to the whole Wolfpack fam. Appreciate you all. Shout out to the Patreons as well. Thank you so much for the support. We'll see you next time. More to come, guys. Peace.